Well, lunatics and dumb people in Washington have wasted the last two years of your life in a frenzy over Russia's supposed influence in our elections. Lost in the hyperbole and commotion and hysteria has been a real story, China's active, pervasive, and ongoing espionage against our country. Most of the press seems completely uninterested in that, but we are interested in it. Now, according to a new report by The Daily Caller, a Chinese-owned company successfully hacked Hillary Clinton's private email server, the illegal one that we used to talk so much about, and by doing that, got real-time access to the emails she sent and received as Secretary of State kind of a shocking story. Dr. Michael Pillsbury is author of The Hundred Year Marathon, China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as the Global Superpower, the single best book on that subject, and he joins us tonight. Dr. Pillsbury, thank you for coming on. Um, so we have a story about this that seems solidly sourced, but my question to you is broader. Does this seem possible? Does it seem likely? Does it shock you? It explains a lot, frankly. Hillary Clinton had a lot of problems with the Chinese, and they often seem to know her moves in advance. I remember she was criticized by the blind lawyer who she negotiated for his freedom, finally got him out. Uh, he was abandoned at a critical moment in the process, in the hospital where he was, and the Chinese began to treat him quite badly. Um, if this story is true, and it's a single intelligence source uh, telling the story, uh, and if the Chinese could, in fact, read her emails for four years, this really is going to cause us to rewrite the history of the pivot. Remember, President Obama wanted to pivot to Asia, yes. doing more about China. If the Chinese were reading the Secretary of State's emails for four years, it makes it look quite different. It looks like they would know a lot more about what Obama and Hillary were up to, and they could plan accordingly. So, yes, I was shocked by the story. Um, it's quite surprising to me that it's taken three years to come out. The story seems to be saying that FBI agents got intelligence that Hillary's emails were being copied to a Chinese company, and they went over and warned no less than Sally Yates herself, and she wouldn't do anything about it. Then when Comey testified in public about the whole email story, he, would, he, he knew if this story today is accurate, and then he left that out of his testimony. There's a vague reference in his book to things that are still classified. But I just checked tonight, Tucker, the word China in the index of Jim Comey's book. There's nothing there at all. <laughs> this is one of those stories that if it is true, and it mm -hmm. looks like it is true, would be a scandal, I, I think, on, on, a, on the next level. Another story that we're not hearing a lot about, but I think is also fascinating, Senator Dianne Feinstein of San Francisco, she serves on the Senate Intelligence Committee, employed a suspected Chinese spy as a personal aide and driver for two decades. Yes. So why wouldn't that be a member of the Senate Intel Committee employing a member of Chinese intelligence or someone working for Chinese intelligence? Uh, it's surprising, and it's a bit ironic because uh, Senator Feinstein has been quite outspoken for more than 20 years as a champion of China. When she was mayor of San Francisco, um, Shanghai was the sister city. She visited there a lot with her husband who does business in China. So this amounts to spying on a friend of China. Senator Feinstein is not sort of a hawk on China, who has been a critic. But more recently, she's been changing her views. She actually supported the so-called CFIUS reform to crack down on Chinese investment in America. She's one of the original co-sponsors of the bill, actually. So if the Chinese were worried that she's slowly beginning to get more concerned about China, that would get, they would have a spy for 20 years. I hate to use the word spy. She says it was just her driver, and he had no access to classified information. But he could certainly listen in on what a senator was doing with China for 20 years. This is another example that is going to cause us, I'm afraid, Tucker, to have to rethink what's been going on in U.S.-China relations the last 10 or 20 years. Yes, we're so naive. They may have outsmarted us beyond even what I claimed in my book. It sure seems that way, but we should be honest about it. We should not lie or cover up, I think. Dr. Pillsbury, thank you, as thank always, you. for your perspective.